What's going on, everybody? Uh, I'm going to be installing the camshaft in my uh, C5 Corvette today, or what could end up being a week, you know, cars. But um, if you're returning, thank you guys for tuning in again. If you're new, go ahead, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, I'm gonna get right into it. Uh, this won't be too definitive, but I'm gonna try. Uh, I went ahead, unplugged the battery, and then took off these decorative pieces so I can get access to the top of the motor right here. Uh, went ahead and put that oil cap back on, make sure I didn't drop anything in there. Put some uh, some protective over my paint to keep it somewhat looking good. Uh, went ahead, removed the spark plug wires and the spark plugs, as well as the uh, coils. Um, went to the alternator, unplugged it, Used a 13, I believe, to take off the two bolts on the front of the bracket to uh, unmount the alternator. And then there's a 12, I think, on the back for the um, battery cable. And then went ahead and took off the belt. That's a 15 for the tensioner. Gonna loosen that up. Uh, took the air intake off. It's aftermarket, so it's not gonna be the same as stock. Um, unplugged the mass airflow. Put that wire to the side and then unbolted the uh, radiator hold down. There's four 10 millimeter bolts for that, two on each side. Uh, there's two plugs on this um, radiator shroud and they're both on the passenger side towards the front. Uh, make sure you get the one at the bottom. It's kind of hard to see, but you'll get it. Um, seven millimeter screws at the bottom. There's five on the front of the uh, bumper or whatever you want to call this right here. And then there's gonna be two hidden right next to the air dam, one on each side. Uh, so you wanna move that air dam and get to those two. Uh, I drained the radiator at this time as well, made sure that was empty. And once the radiator was empty, I went back up to the top, took out or took off all the hoses. Uh, there's two little hoses right here. The lower radiator hose, you wanna make sure you have a bucket under that because there's gonna be some coolant on the lower end. Um, Got that off, took the upper radiator hose off, and then the harness for the fans, you wanna get those fans unplugged and get that harness unclipped from the fans so you can remove this. Um, get what you can from the top with a screwdriver and then get on the bottom. That's where you're gonna be able to get the plugs at. Uh, I took out the fans, the radiator, and the condenser all together. I'm gonna be replacing my radiator and condenser so my AC system was empty. You do not have to take out your condenser and open that system up. You can just take the fans and the radiator out gonna need that room uh so next up i took out the water pump there's six 10 millimeter bolts three on each side and then now i'm gonna have to take off the uh rack and pinion as you can see it's in the in front of the balancer so that's one of the hardest parts about doing a cam swap on a c5 corvette you got to get this out of the way uh so tie rod ends got to remove those 18 millimeter bolt use the breaker bar to break that loose once I broke it loose, turned this wheel outward and got a separation fork, hammered that in there, and popped that out, uh, or use whatever tool you use to get your tie rods loose if you know what you're doing. Once I got those loose, got an 18 millimeter box in and loosened up the lines, the power steering lines to the rack and pinion. Um, make sure you use the box in so you don't strip that. To make it easier, I loosened up the ABS module that's right here. Uh, and some C5s, it's in the back. I think those are the early models, so I'm not sure what the model is or whatever, but it's in the back on the differential on some. Uh, loosen those two bolts up. You can move this around, and since the radiator and everything is out, you can go through the front as well. Uh, make sure you get the top one out first, and then the bottom one, uh, especially since the alternator's out, it's going to make your life way easier. There's a bolt uh, holding the steering shaft onto the rack and pinion. It's a 13 or a 12. You want to remove that, move it off to the side. Make sure you don't turn your steering wheel after this because you can break your clock spring, which uh, controls your uh, or operates your airbag. So just make sure you keep your steering wheel still. Um, from there, I took off the ABS bracket. There's two 13 millimeter bolts hold net on and then the one bolt left is an 18 you're going to need to open in and a socket or however you want to get it off so that goes through and that's what the rack and pinion is mounted on to there's one on the driver's side and the passenger side 
So I had a really difficult time getting that uh, to the passenger side. Highly recommend taking it out the driver's side, which I did when I installed the balancer. Um, but yeah, uh, I have an ARP bolt installed and the summit balancer. So I went ahead and tried to take that off without heating up the bolt or using an impact. No go. So um, I went ahead and got a torch. Uh, at this point, you want to make sure that the car is in like six gear or something so that the motor won't, won't uh, turn over. If you have automatic, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to uh, lock your flywheel somehow, some way, get a tool or something so that doesn't, so the motor doesn't turn over. Um, so yeah, hold that there for a minute. Got that uh, bolt out. Boom. Got the uh, balancer removal tool. I just got this from Summit like years ago. Just a simple uh, universal removal tool. Right. Got that out. Got that on there. Got a towel in here to make sure nothing drops down. But I'm going to come up here. Take off the covers. Take off the rock arms. So, it is a 8 millimeter socket. Hit this. So once you got that off, it's time to take off the rocker arms. Uh, so right now is a good time to make sure your cam sprocket and your uh, crank sprocket, the dots are lined up. You want to have the motor at top dead center when you take all this stuff apart. Uh, so you want the number one cylinder in the firing position. That means the piston's going to be all the way at the top. So the camshaft sprocket dot will be at the bottom in the six o'clock position. The crankshaft sprocket spot will be at the top in the 12 o'clock position all right so now that i got the rockers off uh push rods are free spark plugs are out there's no pressure in the cylinder i'm gonna take off the three 10 millimeter bulbs for the cam sprocket uh then turn that take that off take off the retaining plate put in the little cam down. So, we'll leave that on for right now. I gotta take this off. So this is really, really dangerous because I could drop this in an oil pan. So I'm going to take this off first as a 10, and then you got four 10s around here. So yeah, there's uh, four 10 millimeter bolts holding on this oil pump right here. You take those off, and then there's one more holding on the uh, oil pickup tube to the uh, oil pump. want to make sure those don't fall because there is a little gap. You will have to fish it out with like a magnet or screw finder from your oil pan, if that's possible. Uh, there will be oil falling out of there, so be careful. Um, get three water pump bolts and screw them into your cam and rotate it. You wanna rotate the cam so that all the lifters get pushed up into the lifter trays so you can take off the uh, cam rotating plate and then put in cam dowels. So the cam dowels go on each side of the uh, camshaft and two little holes. They're uh, 5 sixteenths. You can get these cheap little wooden ones at Home Depot for like a dollar each instead of buying the $50 ones, um, the metal $50 ones. You will have to cut them. They're, they're probably going to be too long. Um, but yeah, if you rotate the cam, make sure all the lifters are up. They'll push all the way into the back. Make sure you measure and, and make sure that they're all the way to the back of the motor so that you don't have the lifter fall because you will have to probably take your whole motor out and drop your oil pan. Uh, when you take out the cam, you want to make sure that you don't damage your cam bearing. So do it real slow. Make sure you don't bang anything up. Inspect your cam. If you're going to be reusing your lifters, make sure there's no damage to it. Uh, like I'm doing, I'm reusing my same lifters, not taking off the heads. Of course, you already know I'm using the uh, comp drift cam. That's the part number. Going to be using Clevite bearing guard as a lube because that's all I had right now. I want to make sure you get your uh, cam well lubed up before you... Uh, Go ahead and put that back in there. You want to make sure you put it in real slow. Um, <laughs> and uh, 
<laughs> Make sure you don't bang anything up. <laughs> Use a glove, man. Wrap it up. Your hands. Here's the uh, new camera retaining plate. I believe that little orange piece is what's like the most important, of course. Um, as you can see on the old one, it's kind of worn out. But yeah, got a new one. Got a tire chain. Get the uh, sprocket ring thing. Good. Camera chain damper. Part number. I'll be putting all the part numbers down. Boom. Okay, so this comes with two different sizes. It's a black one and a green one. I didn't get a red one. And it says if your stock one was blue, then use a black one. Right? So this is blue. I am in fact gonna use a black one. Boom. which one goes forward front or back so either way so that little dot facing straight up so we put this on because it looks like I'm not gonna have any space to okay. this chains on I'm gonna put thread locker on these tighten those up to torque spec Then oil pump time, and then come up, change out the valve springs. Uh, yeah. So for me, what I did, everything here behind this timing chain cover, uh, as far as the cam bolts, the cam retaining plate bolts, the uh, oil pump bolts, the um, timing chain dampener bolts, I put thread locker on everything. I, I wasn't taking any chances and uh torqued it all down to spec so like i said make sure those dots are lined up and make sure that the little pin on the camshaft that goes into the sprocket is facing three o'clock here's the uh torque specs for everything so that's your cam uh, retainer bolts cam sprocket the oil pump and then um valve rocker arms water pump all that stuff right there so here's the old or new oil pump, my bad, compared to the uh, old one. Always want to compare your parts. Of course, this is original uh, oil pump on here, so it looks a little bit different on the front. But um, when you install this, you just want to make sure you line up those ridges on the inside. You really can't install it wrong, you know, like it won't be able to fit on there. Of course, thread locker on those bolts. And then uh, you want to make sure that you put that pick up tube back up to the uh, oil pump. Make sure you put the new ring on there. Make sure you put the right ring on there and uh, tighten Ooh. that up. Up next, I'm gonna be doing valve springs. System. Oh, got new valve seals. Let me take one spring. So, if you're doing this like me uh, without removing the cylinder heads from the car and you're going to be doing a valve spring swap, you're going to need these two tools. Uh, the one on the left is to compress air into the cylinder uh, through the spark plug hole. So you screw that in there and put about 40 pounds or however much you need, not a whole bunch, and it keeps the valves from falling down into the cylinder instead of rotating the motor and making sure that the pistons all the way at the top so here is the valve spring compressor tool the little part goes on the bottom the 
bigger part goes on the top with the long screw going through. You want to make sure you put a lock washer. I forgot to put it on there. Uh, it's going to keep it from spinning because you're going to be turning the opposite way. So you can hear the air going in there, um, keeping the valves up. But once you get the valve springs compressed enough, you can go ahead, get a magnet and get those valve spring keepers out of there. Loosen up the compressor and then uh, remove the retainer and the old spring. I'm using LS6 springs, so I'm going to be using the same retainers and keepers. So uh, I made sure I didn't mix them up because they're not blue anymore, the LS6 springs. Uh, but yeah, while you got the valve spring off, or while I had the valve spring off, I went ahead and replaced the valve seals. So the intakes are on the left side, exhaust on the right. The exhaust is the brown one. Um, I went ahead and used the socket to push it down. I forget what size socket was. Uh, sorry about that. But um, as far as putting the springs back on, the uh, tool isn't an expensive tool. So I'm pretty sure the cheaper tools are going to be kind of hard to align the uh, valves right to get the keepers on. Just take your time, compress them, get them down, and you know move the tool around when they're compressed and you'll get it in. Take your time. Make sure you don't drop the keepers or anything in the motor, but yeah. So after I got the valve springs on, um, I went ahead and put the rocker arms back on. Highly recommend going and finding a video showing you how to tighten these rocker arms or reinstall them, because uh, you can cause damage to your motor if you don't do this right. Uh, but what I did is I set the uh, rocker arms to zero lash, which is basically you tighten up the rocker arm until there's no up and down movement or play it's just side to side and then um what i did is i rotated the motor watch the rocker arm go uh, down and then come back up and then rotated it a little bit more so i knew i was on that flat spot and then went ahead and tightened up the rocker arm to uh 22 foot pounds of torque um so that that was the way i felt safe is doing it i don't know how you guys want to do it but yeah all right, all those are tightened up. I'm cleaning this um, surface right here. Getting any scratch or sledge off. Make sure I got a clean contact between the gasket and that. So clean the, all that. Make sure there's no, no remnants or anything. And boom, gonna tighten these down and then go back to the front. Start putting everything back together. All right. So, got this gasket. It's only one way to put it on. You can see, boom, boom. Uh, the part number right here. Bingo. Got the ten bolts. Gonna clean those up. All cleaned up. I got the motor all cleaned up. The front. So, what's next? I don't think I'm gonna use RTV down here. But I might regret it, so oh well. But yeah. all right. So got this much done. The uh, timing chain cover, gasket, and cover or whatever the pulse for that is going to be. 18 foot pounds of torque. 10 millimeters. Got those back on. Um, I'm going to tighten up the crank bolt right now. With it's ARP though, so. Um, we're gonna go to 235 foot pounds of torque. Get it up in here. As you can see, boom, boom. Bam. So that's gonna be tough. Um, I am using 1 and 1 16th. Get back to you guys. So, Car is in sixth gear. Still got all this stuff left to do. So the best way that I could get that bolt to hit 235 foot pounds of torque is to get it on there like that. Tighten it up by hand as much as you can. Came down here. Make sure it's on there straight. Grab it and put my foot on it. There you go. 
I'm kind of speeding here, so sorry. Um, rack is back in, lines are back on, steering is back on, bracket for this brake thing is back on. Um, one of the bolts for the steering rack does go through here, so remember that. I gotta put my spark plugs, booster coils back, or not boosters, but whatever they are, the coils back on, alternator. Tighten these up, but right now I'm gonna put that guy in. That's the old one. Gotta put the fan on, so I'm gonna get the hose on, slide it in there, Let's see what happens. I was rushing through it and didn't film a lot of it. Sorry about that, but I did get it all back together. Um, the upper radiator support, I couldn't get it back on, so I'm gonna have to figure out uh, what to do about that because I don't think the air uh intake is going to be holding that down by itself but of course moment of truth cold start here you go Like always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe. Leave a comment, good or bad. Um, and of course, see you guys on the next one.